everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Dee. I am a working professional in the risk management area and I am a qualified actuary. So I started this channel with the mission to help you and also myself to study smarter, work better and live happier. So one of my objectives is to promote the actual profession and this is another episode of Get to Know an Actuary, an Actual Professional series. Uh, so today I'm, I'm pleased to introduce you to uh, Ranveer. Uh, she is a working professional, um, working as an actual consultant in the UK. She also has a great YouTube channel uh, talking about her actual career journey and uh, sharing all of her experiences and her knowledge. Tell us a little bit about yourself. My name is Ranveer, also pronounced Ranveer, and I work as an actuarial consultant at a big four firm in London, and I've been doing so for around two years and five months now. And prior to this, I studied a bachelor's degree in mathematics at university, followed by a master's degree in actuarial science. And in whatever free time I have away from working and studying, I like to dance and also create YouTube videos, just documenting my journey to becoming a fellow and also creating content to help others get into this profession as well. I'm very happy to know another working professional who likes to dance. I'm also trying to up my dancing skill this year and I'm practicing weekly with a good friend of mine and hopefully um, I will be a better dancer by the end of the year. So anyways, back to the actual profession. So why did you decide to become an actuary and be on this path? So the profession as an actuary was actually suggested to me by one of my friends at university when I was in my third year and at that point I was kind of struggling to gain internship experience. I had applied to a lot of banks and a lot of investment banks related to a variety of different roles all across the different areas of a bank and yeah in my second year of university I was unsuccessful in getting an internship and so in my third year I did a lot more research into the actuarial profession and thought that it seemed really interesting and something that I might actually enjoy rather than all the banking roles that I was just applying to because everybody else was applying for them. And since I was on a four-year course, I decided to apply for internships in my penultimate year, so my third year, so that I could gain around four to six weeks of experience over my summer, just trying to see if I could imagine myself working full-time as an actuary. And unfortunately, I wasn't successful in gaining that internship. I instead worked in tax, but still reached out to the actuarial team at that um, during my time on the internship just to show that I was interested and so I received a graduate job offer with the tax team and somehow managed to swap that to the actuarial team and I'm really happy with my decision actually. I didn't really know too much about the career path even whilst I was applying for jobs. I knew based on all the job requirements that I read that it just required strong mathematical skills and strong problem solving and analytical skills and that's something that I thought that I had basically so I thought that maybe I would be a good fit for this role just based on those three factors alone. As you are writing exam with the Institute and Faculty of Actuaries, the IFOA, so can you describe to us a little bit more about their education system? Uh, how can one become qualified in the UK? Yeah, sure. So I think things are slightly different in the UK to how they work in Canada or the US, say. And so with the IFOA, we have 13 exams that we will need to sit in order to qualify as a fellow. And these exams will involve content to do with statistics, financial economics, and also specialist areas such as life insurance, pensions, health insurance, investments, general insurance, and so on. And so we have a set of core subjects that all actuarial students will need to sit. And then we have a set of specialist exams, as I just mentioned, so life insurance, general insurance, and so on. And we get to choose out of a selection of those which ones we want to choose. So I currently work in life insurance. And so that means that I would sit the life insurance specialist exam. And so I won't be sitting the general insurance or the pensions exam. And so once you have passed all of these exams, which could take around four to five years, maybe even longer, then you will qualify as a fellow of the Institute and Faculty of Actuaries. But there is also a work experience requirement whereby you will need to have worked a minimum of three years in order to qualify. And just to add on to that, if you do not want to complete all of the exams and become a fellow, there is also the option to only do the core exams, so the core principles and core practical exams, and become an associate instead. And 
and so I believe the work experience requirements for this is that you will need to have worked I think one or two years rather than a minimum of three years and personally I don't know anybody who has stopped at the associate level all of my colleagues have gone on to gain fellowship with the IFOA and so that is also what I'm aiming to do as well but there is that option that once you've passed those core exams you are an associate you can stop there and you don't have to continue on to become a fellow with the IFOA and actually there is a third qualification that you could gain through the IFOA and that is the CIRA qualification which stands for Chartered Enterprise Risk Actuary and this is aimed at those who want to work in this new area of enterprise risk management and I have a few colleagues that actually went ahead and got this qualification as well and this just requires you to take a specific specialist exam and once you have completed that along with all of the other exams then you can get that qualification too and so those are essentially the three qualifications that you can work towards having as a member of the IFOA. You started your current YouTube channel in 2020 uh, so what made you decide to start the channel and how do you uh, manage on working, studying, uh, YouTube and other stuff? So throughout my life I've probably had like around four to five YouTube channels where I had uploaded videos and these just vary across different genres so I had a YouTube channel with my friend at school where we would do all sorts of challenge videos and like prank related stuff and just things like that and that actually did gain quite a decent following we just didn't keep it up when we went to university and I also had a couple of dance YouTube channels but yeah I just love the idea of kind of filming creating content editing and just kind of sharing that online and meeting new people through the internet based on similarities that you may have and and so since I started working, I have always been extremely busy. Like I'm always on the go. I'm just that type of person who has to be doing something after work. So whenever I would finish work, I'd run off to like a dance class. I'd run off to see friends. I'd go out here for dinner, go out to different places and so on. So my life was very busy. And in fact, January and February throughout 2020 was very hectic for me. I was literally on the go everywhere. I was also trying to film dance content on the side. And I went on a few trips with friends and stuff and then suddenly in March everything just kind of stopped and then we were just put into a lockdown and at the time things were very uncertain and like it was just an unknown period where you just didn't know what to expect from the future but I just decided that month that I was just gonna put my head down and focus for my apron exams which I hadn't actually been focusing for a lot prior to that and yeah then after my exams finished in April I found myself having quite a lot of spare time because we were still in lockdown and I couldn't go out to see my friends anymore I couldn't go out to dance classes like going out places and just like enjoying those social aspects of life essentially and so I don't know I'd always thought about the whole idea of making a YouTube channel just related to like my job but I always held back on it because I just didn't have the time to do it so in May I just kind of created the channel but didn't really upload anything until June and yeah from there I never looked back really and it was a really good decision that I made and I'm really happy that I made that decision. I just kind of felt like there was that sort of gap on YouTube where there were people who were making videos about being an actuary but not a lot compared to other communities say so I just thought yeah this could be helpful to at least somebody else so I just thought why not and I'm no genius I definitely do not represent all actuaries in the UK I don't have the best track record when it comes to exams but I feel as though people can learn a lot from my experience and yeah I guess that's just something that is kind of unique to me that I'm not like that perfect student who possibly passes all the exams first time. I feel like I have definitely made a lot of mistakes and that's kind of what made me want to make the YouTube channel even more. Just to make people aware that it's okay to make certain mistakes but you know they can be avoided and I'm here to try and <laughs> help you avoid them. But yeah overall I'd say that I am really happy with the decision I made and I'm really enjoying creating this content for my YouTube channel and I've definitely seen myself become so much more comfortable in front of the camera and I feel like it's also affected the way I kind of communicate at work now too. I feel a lot more confident and comfortable sort of like chairing meetings and holding up discussions with people and just stuff like that and I feel like that's kind of down to creating this YouTube channel which has really helped me become more comfortable in speaking about my job and studying and so on. And in terms of balancing making YouTube 
videos with work and studying. It can be a struggle sometimes, especially during this period right now, actually. I'm really busy at work, so I've kind of set myself that target to create two videos a week just to keep that consistent flow going. But I also am trying really hard not to put a lot of pressure on me to fulfill that because I don't want it to affect the quality of my work and I also don't want it to get in the way of my exams in April. So yeah, it can definitely be difficult trying to find that balance, but I guess it's just about not putting too much pressure on yourself and just making sure you're still enjoying making videos. I also agree. I believe that it's all about prioritize and also give us enough of breathing room so we can still enjoy what we are doing. So you recently graduated and got your actual job. So was it difficult to get your first actual job? And do you have any advice for actual students who want to increase their chance to secure an actual position? Oh, I would definitely say that it was very difficult to get my first actuarial job. Like applying for jobs is a full-time job in itself. It was a lot of effort. Like it required a lot of time and organization. I had a whole spreadsheet listing out firms that I wanted to apply for and each column stated each application round that I made it to. I just had to keep track of all of that as well as studying for university and like having a social life and training for dance competitions and stuff like that. So there was a lot going on in my life and I was faced with rejection after rejection after rejection and it was very demotivating but I just kept going with it. And I mentioned earlier that I did an internship in a tax team and whilst I was on that team I tried really hard to reach out to the actuarial team at the firm just so that I could kind of make a connection there because I had heard that it can make things easier if you know people and obviously that is really unfair but I kind of tried to use that to my advantage that I'm working at this firm that has an actuarial team let me try and reach out and build connections and yeah then I can kind of name drop later on so I remember when I was asked why I wanted to swap to the actuarial team I said during my tax internship I had a coffee catch up with this director from the actuarial team and they were like oh who was it and I said their name and they thought oh wow okay nice and it was just little things like that that I think really helped as well and so for the internships I applied to like 20 to 30 places and even when I was applying for grad jobs whilst I was still waiting to hear back on whether they would allow me to swap to the actuarial team I was still applying for graduate jobs at insurance companies, banks, and consultancy firms. And, you know, again, I was receiving a lot of rejections, but also some interviews and assessment centers here and there. But then once I finally found out, and when I say finally, I mean, it took them a long time to get back to me on this. When I finally found out that I was offered the job, it was such a huge relief because it really did consume so much of my time. And I would say the job market is definitely competitive, but there are so many things that you can be doing to kind of increase your chances and improve your application. So just kind of doing the odd courses on the side to build programming skills, build Excel skills and so forth. And just kind of showing that you have a balance with your academic side and your extracurricular side so things like that and I'd say for those applying right now try to think about the strengths that you have and also look at the job description that is laid out in front of you and look at some of the keywords they're giving and you want to sort of tailor your CV or your application answers or your cover letter based on those keywords that they're using so that you can show to them that you are a good fit for that firm and if you're still at university, then definitely make use of the careers resources that they have. And if possible, attend any networking sessions that you can, because that really helped me. I was able to talk to professionals that were already working in the industry. I gained a lot of insight from them, learned a lot of things that I could kind of take forward and mention in my interviews. And I even had the opportunity to talk to people within HR from different companies and just kind of find out the sorts of things that they're looking for when they're choosing which applicants to put forward for interviews. And yeah, you can learn a lot of stuff from that. So I highly recommend just looking into that if you can. And above all, just make sure that you do what you can to stay motivated, stay focused on the end goal of gaining that internship placement or graduate job. Because once you get that offer, you'll look back and think, yeah, it was all worth it. So keep going at it. And I am sure if you 
stay persistent with it, then you will definitely be able to secure a job. You say applying for a job is a job of itself. So build your experiences, enhance your knowledge, polish your resume, and uh, master your interview skills. Uh, create a story for yourself and go to networking sessions or events so that you can build up uh, the network as well as uh, learning more insight into the jobs and the companies that you are interested in. If you like this video um, and find it useful, don't forget to like and uh, subscribe and follow me and Ranveer uh, for more actuarial content and career advice. Uh, I wish you another happy productive week and I will see you in another video. Bye now!